Hello there. I feel like it's been a second since we had a proper YouTube video, but to be fair, I was on a, uh, a very fun side quest and I collected, I uh, collected this at the end of it. So that was fun. <laughs> a huge thank you to everyone who followed along and enjoyed the World Barista Championship journey that we went on. It definitely looked a little bit different from USBC. It was definitely a little bit more internal than I was for USBC, but it was a lot of fun. Now I'm gonna do a video talking about it, answering questions very soon, but for now, fun, celebration, very cool, moving on. Today, we're not talking about WBC. Today, we are back to pretty regularly scheduled programming. So we're gonna taste test some things we're gonna rank some things, and those things are coffee from MREs. MREs stands for Meals Ready to Eat. They are often used as rations in kind of like survival outdoor situations, in military situations. They are usually freeze-dried and packaged foods that you rehydrate and eat on the go. And having grown up watching a lot of MRE review videos, I'm very excited about today. So let me show you what I have procured for us. While they don't look super fancy, we have six different things to try today. Inside, we have coffee from a pretty Pretty standard accessory packet. We then have a different accessory packet with different coffee. We have a whole breakfast meal, which inside, you guessed it, another accessory packet full of coffee. And then we have the brown bags, which I am even more excited about. And these ones are gonna be our fancy, I don't wanna call them a cafe beverage, but they're kind of cafe beverages. We have Irish cream cappuccino, exhibit one. We have mocha cappuccino, and then we have French vanilla cappuccino. We have six different coffees. We are going to taste test them. We are going to rank them. That's the plan today. I'm gonna go get all the supplies we need to brew these. I'm gonna go get some boiling water and I'll be back very, very shortly. I wanna give a huge thank you to Vessi for partnering with me on today's video. I've been wearing Vessi's for a while and they've fast become some of my favorite shoes to wear anywhere from work to my everyday. And since it's a surprisingly sunny fall, I've been taking them all around town due to their low profile and breathable material. Their weekends are a staple in my wardrobe and they also have an array of colors if black isn't your jam. Additionally, Vessi's are 100% waterproof and made from a lightweight Dimatex knit material, meaning that while I'm hiking, working, or even just doing errands, my feet will stay dry and comfortable. This really makes them the perfect all-purpose everyday shoe, and their herringbone tread pattern helps them be grippy and safe for long walks both in the city and in nature. Also, fun fact, I've had my white pair of Vessies for nearly two years now, and they remain my only non-black shoe in my wardrobe. That's how much I love them. Now, if you want to match with me and get your own pair of Vessies for yourself or a friend, I gotcha, because Vessie is giving my subscribers $25 off your purchase when you click the link below and enter code MORGAN. That's the link in the description and code MORGAN. Thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back. As far as our rankings go today, we're gonna be looking at tastiness, number one. We're gonna be looking at the mouthfeel of it. That'll be our number two. We're also going to be looking for how easy it is to make because there are a couple different methods of making these coffees in here. We're also gonna rate if it needs cream or not. There is also a couple different additions of like powdered creamers. And I think those are gonna be very fun to dive into as well. Ultimately, I'm looking on a one to five scale. At the end, we'll see what we have and hopefully find the best MRE coffee. I kind of wanna hold off on on the milk-based ones, which are gonna be those wide variety of cappuccinos. Let's just start at the top here. As many of you can probably assume, all of these coffees are gonna be instant coffees. And this is the first one we have. This is deep, rich coffee. I'm glad to tell you it is also 100% coffee. I will note that this is a very small <laughs> amount of instant coffee, but on the back it says, empty contents of package into cup. Add hot water, stir, and enjoy. It doesn't tell us how much water to add. I'm gonna assume it's, it's estimating about a cup, which is gonna be about eight ounces. So we'll start there. Get all the powder down at the end. Number one. Honestly, this smells like cocoa powder. Get as much as possible out. I don't know how well you can see. That is not a ton of coffee. That was 1.2 grams of coffee, in fact. Based solely on how little there is, I think we're gonna go a little bit lower than eight ounces. I think we're gonna start at like six ounces, maybe. We'll see how that tastes. If we need to add more water, we can always do that. My mother always said, we can't take away what you've added. We've also been gifted a spoon in our accessory package, so I think it's fair game to use it in this making. It's about six ounces of water. Some stirring. Already looking at the color, this seems pretty light. Oh, and I guess I can, can use my nice little napkin that was included. Good. This is a dark cup of coffee right here. That is most certainly still too much water. <laughs> this is a very, a very watered down cup of instant coffee. And I should have guessed by the amount in here, but as we were given limited instructions, we were working with what we had. Flavor wise, it's not the worst instant coffee I've had, I'll be honest. It really just tastes super watered down. So maybe this would have been better in kind of an Italiano ratio, maybe like a, like a four to five ounce perhaps at most. 
Overall, pretty inoffensive though. I don't know if it'll help at all. We have been gifted a creamer and I am tempted to add it in. It's always interesting because it says it's a non-dairy creamer and yet it includes milk. So it is what it is. I say we add a little bit of creamer to this. As it stands, I would give this a three. This is pretty inoffensive. The recipe is definitely wrong on it, but like just off of what it tastes like right now, there's nothing too bad about it. I'll just add like, well, about half the creamer. Nice little stir. It somehow tastes even more neutral with the creamer added. <laughs> I think this is a solid three. I think this is a good middle of the road. I think this is fine. It's not blowing me out of the water, but I think it's a three. Deep Rich, you were an experience. Moving on, let's go to our next accessory packet. Next on the chopping block is something I am very, very excited about because if you've watched any MRE videos in the past, you might be kind of familiar with this one. This is Coffee Instant Type 1. <laughs> Now, I grew up watching these sorts of videos all the time and always remember them talking about coffee instant type one versus type two. So having type one is very exciting. Unlike our previous package, we do have a little bit more instruction this time. Directions, dissolve contents into one third canteen cup, which is approximately eight ounces of water. It says it this time. Also, it tells you the weight. This is approximately 2.5 grams of instant coffee. I'm excited. Off the bat, coffee type one looks and smells a lot lighter than that previous cup. Actually, we got a little bit more than promised. Looks like we have 2.7 grams of coffee here. This looks like a much better formulation of instant coffee as well. Man, all of these just smell like cocoa. It's kind of nuts. And not even in like in like a coffee chocolate, like relational sort of way. Like this smells like hot chocolate mix. I kind of wish it was. Some stirring for incorporation. On the nose, I think we have a better ratio of instant coffee to water. Let's see. It is okay. This one, I like a little bit more. There's a little bit more complexity uh, in the flavor here. It's definitely on the lighter side of roast profiles. It's definitely not a light roast, but it's definitely closer to a medium than that dark roast the other one was. It's very sippable. There's a little bit of bitterness in the aftertaste that's like not super pleasant, but at the same time, it is a taste. <laughs> and compared to the last one, which didn't really have much flavor, a little bit of bitterness is kind of like a nice balancing agent. And it does remind me that I am drinking coffee and not like like, I don't know, whatever the last one was. I think there's still too much water most likely, but the balance is better. So I give instant coffee type one, I don't know. It almost makes me want to bump down the other one. Okay, feels bad to go back on what I said, but I think after tasting this one, this is a true three. The other one's a two, moving on. Or I guess not even moving on, because uh, we have cream here. This is a very, I was like trying to move the, the powder down. It is very much at the top there. Is it cream? What is this? It says cream substitute, non-dairy. Okay, hang on, I gotta pull. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm looking at. It's like cardboard inside. I don't know if this is intentional or if I'm about to ingest something that I shouldn't be ingesting, which wouldn't be the first time. Cream substitute dry non-dairy for coffee or tea, coconut oil, corn syrup, solids, whey, sodium. Okay, a lot of things, artificial flavoring, natural color. Okay, so I was expecting like a milk powder situation. Instead, there's like this. <laughs> it kind of looks like a cracker to me. Kind of tastes like a cracker too. I don't really know what I'm eating. I'm gonna put it in the coffee though. I don't wanna add all of it, I feel like something has, something has gone very wrong. Cream substitute for coffee or tea. I don't have any expiration date. This um, strange cracker scenario is holding shape alarmingly well. In fact, it is becoming, if anything, more slimy as I stir. I am so unbelievably confused right now. I think more confused than I have ever been <laughs> in a YouTube video. Anyways, I'm not sure what I have just put in here is cream. I don't know what I just consumed. The cream gets a zero, let's be fair. The coffee itself gets a three. I'm sure someone in the comments has some information about what the thing is that I just put in my body. If you do, and it's bad for me, please do not let me know. Now, this next coffee comes from a full meal that I was able to purchase. It's a breakfast meal. It is scrambled eggs with cheese, Western style. Very exciting. I might dig into this at some point later. For now though, we have a very nice, actually a very, very nice accessory package. Lots of things to choose from. The coffee itself is called Bill's Brew. It is from William James Coffee Company. And the instructions say, 
add coffee and six ounces of hot or cold water and stir. This is the first one that has said six ounces, which I think is very much where you should be aiming for with these sorts of coffee. So I'm excited about the direction on this. Once more, we have a non-dairy creamer. This one I can already feel is still in a powder form. So that bodes well. We've also, for the first time, have been given sugar. Very nice. Also, this has absolutely nothing to do with the coffee. Can everyone appreciate this <laughs> tiny Tabasco container? <laughs> I'm gonna um, put this up next to the trophy, I think. We also have a moist towelette, so that's very nice. Anywho, coffee in. Ooh, it's kind of a different kind of instant coffee. You have very, very large coffee crystals in there. It's kind of fun. The rest of these have pretty much just been powders. In we go. Six ounces in, plus some stirring, some sniffing. Smells about the same as the previous one, that, that type one instant. I think this one is my favorite so far. This one, pretty well balanced. Six ounces is about right for a cup of instant coffee, especially with this proportion. There was about two grams of the instant coffee inside that package, so pretty good taste-wise. There is less of that bitterness that I was experiencing on the aftertaste of the type one. This is a lot more pleasant all the way through the sip. I also think they were nice and descriptive with their instruction, and on top of that, the packaging is pretty cute. I'm gonna tentatively give this one a four. I think this is my favorite so far. Now, just for consistency, Let's add some cream. A little bit of that in there for fun. Let's add some sugar. Why not? Feels like I'm making a potion, which is to this coffee's favor. This is very enjoyable right now. I am having a great time. Taste buds aside from the weird cracker cream. Just a bad combination of words. <laughs> Let's be totally clear. All right, I'm sipping. That's nice. I would 100% sip on this for a good second. Bill's Brew on its own gets a four, and I would also rate it yummy when <laughs> in addition to cream and sugar. Unintentionally, we have now tasted all of our standard instant coffees in order of their ranking. We have two, three, and four out of a scale of five. Now, these three are a little bit different, not just because they are like cappuccinos and milk-based versus like these like just instant coffees, but because the assembly is a little bit different. These come in pouches. They are resealable pouches. If you can kind of see a little bit on top there is a zipper up here. Instruction wise, you're supposed to open the zipper, you add your six ounces of hot or cold water into this, just into the packet, and then you close the zipper, you shake to mix for about 60 seconds, and then you consume promptly, which by their definition is within one hour. Kind of an all-in-one scenario, which I am very excited about. We're gonna start off with the French vanilla, as that is the one I have apparently chosen to open first. Inside, you can see instant coffee crystals, you can see powdered milk, and you can very much smell the artificial sweetness of whatever sort of powdered sweetener is inside. Pretty standard to what you'd expect. Now, once more, we're supposed to fill to this line, which is apparently about six ounces. Feels bad to pour hot water into a, a bag, but here goes nothing. It'd be kind of like a, a pour and test sort of scenario. That's mostly up to the line. So very carefully reseal. It says shake. I'm gonna fold to ensure we have no disasters. This is fun. It's very hot. <laughs> Holding this is not <laughs> ideal for sure. We've definitely had a little bit of explosion out the top, but not bad. There's just like a few singular drops. And now, hello judges. <laughs> Well, I will admit, for whatever we have here, it is kind of cappuccino-sized, being about six ounces. It definitely smells sweeter than I'd usually drink, but uh, it smells all right. That's not a half-decent mouthfeel. <laughs> that is pretty stinking okay. There must be a good deal of like powdered milk and like thickeners in there because this is substantial in how kind of like heavy it is in the mouth. Sorry, these are a lot of bad barista words that I'm using. It doesn't taste watery is essentially what I'm trying to say. It is certainly very sweet. That is the predominant thing I'm getting here. However, the heaviness of it really surprised me. I'm gonna give this four. I think it's kind of like a baseline for these milk drinks. This is pretty sippable. Now the next one we have is our Irish cream. I'm actually kind of excited to shake this again. That was very fun. Smells like something. A Little bit more water. We'll call that good. Push a little bit of air out, seal, fold, and shake. I could see myself doing this in a cafe probably. That feels like long enough. And out we go doesn't smell too dissimilar to the last one, that French vanilla. You know, this one is good. This one is like the same level of sweetness as the French vanilla. However, the French vanilla definitely had a lot of artificial vanilla in it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It was definitely distinct, but having the sweetness without the artificial flavor is a lot better. Now that I'm getting a little bit of side-by-side -side comparison. 
I wanna tentatively give this one a five. Out of all of these, I would sip on this one. I could probably finish this, if I'm being totally honest. Like if I was out somewhere far away from the comforts of like a standard life, if this was in my package and I had this in the morning, I would be pretty happy, I think. I think this could be a very decent way to start your day. So with, uh, with threat of tapping out our scale a little bit early, I'm gonna give this a five. We'll see how the mocha tastes. This uh, bodes well because the mocha does not smell like a super sugary chocolate. It smells like there's a little bit closer to a baker's chocolate in here. I feel like if anything, chocolate is the easiest to get away with in like a powdered or artificial standpoint. Like the flavor itself uh, works pretty well. These super sweet ones like vanilla and Irish cream, always a little bit trickier. I feel like I'm developing a, a really strong shake technique as well. As much as I wanna do this like back and forth movement, it then pushes all this hot water up into my hand. It's not super pleasant. <laughs> On the nose, smells like Swiss Miss hot chocolate mix. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like this a lot, probably more than I should. I feel like after months of drinking just competition coffees and training and tasting espresso, something like this is a welcome reprieve. I think this one is a five as well. I think if this video has said anything, it shows that there is certainly an advantage to adding milk to your coffee in a, in a desperate scenario. It almost always makes it better. And if you put powdered chocolate in as well, sometimes, even really good. To review where we landed with our final rankings. At the bottom, we have our deep rich coffee. This one was fine and okay, but not awesome. Then at a slightly better place, a little bit better mouthfeel and also a little bit more complexity in each sip, we have coffee instant type one, the infamous coffee instant type one. And then at three, we have two options. We have both a milk based drink, which is our French vanilla cappuccino here. Also have Bill's Brew, which was decently balanced, decent mouthfeel, and also very accurate instructions. If you remember, this is the one that instructed six ounces of water instead of eight and then mystery amount down here. Then lastly, the two drinks that I would probably, if you handed to me, sip at any point in my life outside of a survival scenario. We have our mocha cappuccino. We also have an Irish cream cappuccino, which we can debate the meaning of cappuccino all we want, but that's what they're calling them. That's what we're going to call them. Now, this was a lot of fun. I will admit because of the quantity I had to order of these to get these, I do have quite a bit of the milk-based drinks left over and kind of excited for the fact that if and when, although it more likely might be if I ever go camping, I will have these to take with me. This bodes very well for my future outdoor explorations. Hope you all enjoyed. I hope you maybe learned something or took something away from this. But in the meantime, I'll see you next week. I invite any and all comments and or questions about WBC to be left in the description below. Additionally, on Instagram in probably the next few days, I'm going to be putting up the option to ask me questions for an upcoming video I'm doing, kind of capping off and detailing the season as we move forward. I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee pretty much everywhere you can find me. I'll be here on YouTube once a week plus shorts. Additionally, you can find me on Instagram or TikTok pretty much every single day. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.